August 7th, NBA tip-off, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, live on Wager Talk TV each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. And we're going to have not only the Friday games here, but we have some time at the end. We'll quickly maybe look at some weekend matchups if anybody has any opinions on those. But, of course, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, live here on Wager Talk TV, NBA tip-off. Just a reminder, by the way, we do have a baseball show both Saturday and Sunday at noon Eastern. Matt Josephs will be stepping in and hosting first pitch Saturday and Sunday this weekend, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. Be sure to check that out. And then we'll be back on Monday, 3 p.m. Eastern for your next NBA tip-off. But we got a lot of games here on Friday, some weekend action as well. Rob Vino, Ski Profit, Teddy Covers. Let's get uh, to a quick recap, Rob. How'd you do yesterday on Thursday? Uh, any takeaways from the NBA action for you? Well, we had another 2-0 and yesterday, so that runs it to 5-0 and the last couple of days. So it's been good. It's been very good to us. Um, you know, I think we said yesterday, Steve, real quick, not to beat a point to death, but you have to keep an eye on these line movements because, you know, just because Paul Millsap is out doesn't mean the over goes down three points. And that game hits 240 yesterday regardless of Paul Millsap. So that's a side we happen to have been on, on the over in that contest. Worked out well. Portland looks good, guys. Um, the two big guys back. I know Ski, we talked about it a lot during a regular season. If they had those big guys, they could do some damage. And right now, boy, oh, boy, they look like they could do some damage. So uh, it was a good night overall, Steve, and we'll see what happens here tonight. Yeah, I took a pass yesterday, as I mentioned on the show. Uh, easy, easy 6-1 baseball winner, by the way, but I took a pass in the NBA. Um, a lot of uncertainty yesterday. Uh, Teddy, how'd you do, and what were your takeaways? Uh, we talked about a lot of that uncertainty on the show for Thursday. Yeah, I had a good day yesterday. Like Rob, I went 2-0. Uh, Rob had some right sides. I had some strong fourth quarters, <laughs> and I'll take them. Uh, I cashed with the Bucks when they went on that incredible 20 to nothing run wow. uh, against uh, uh, <laughs> Miami late. And then I cash with Portland uh, with uh, another late run uh, where the Blazers were able to take care of business. But we're also seeing, I'm definitely seeing the teams that are, you know, the coach wants them to compete. All right, they're competing for 42 minutes or 44 minutes. But during crunch time, the team that wants it is finding ways to get it. And of all the, the, the handicapping acumen you can come up with in the bubble, in my mind, that's the single most important factor right now is who wants this game tonight uh, as opposed to which teams you want to ride indefinitely and so on and so forth. So uh, we're seeing that play out, at least in some ways, the way I expected it to. Yeah, I mean, Teddy, you know, I mentioned the other show. It's like the NFL preseason for me, and that sounds just like how you handicap the NFL preseason. You look at a game-by-game, game, game by game approach, who wants it more, and what do the coaches want especially, you know? And, and especially but the, the key to the, uh, the NFL preseason is you forget that the Chiefs are the Chiefs and right. the Bengals are the Bengals. You know, you don't have any thoughts about how good the teams are. It's just about what the coach wants. Um, yeah, what's, what's cool about this, though, Teddy, is, you know, you're never going to get Mahomes for more than a quarter or two, even in the dress rehearsal. Like here with the Bucks, if they want to show up, they can be the best team in the East, you know, and put those guys on the court. Um, it's an interesting situation. By the way, as we did the show yesterday, I didn't have any NBA, but I really started liking the Bucks after we all talked about it. Mm -hmm. And after the show, I was like, I should have played that. And I look and they're down by what, 17 at halftime? As oh, they night. were down 17 early. They got blown out. They've been blown. I was so, I was a pop apoplectic yesterday. Dude. I was not <laughs> uh, amused by the, uh, by the first half of that ball game. Uh, although I did bet more at halftime. Good. So the uh, the thirty one point uh, margin in the second half by the Bucks served you well. Then on it, a was a, it was a good result. It was a nice twenty to nothing run. You'll, I'll, I'll take them when I can get them. And it shows what they're capable of doing when they want to show up. But like you said, that's the key right now to handicapping these regular season quote bubble games. For me, like almost like a preseason game. Ski Profit, uh, what were your takes on Thursday? Uh, I had a winner with the Blazers, just like Rob talked about. They're looking really good. And who's not looking good? The Pelicans. Uh, they look terrible. So uh, that was most surprising to me. I didn't expect that. So, and uh, we'll see what they do today. Yeah, that game was, uh, you know, in-game live for us yesterday. And it was got close for a little bit. And by the end of the show, they were down by double digits. Um, so, yeah, the Pelicans definitely have not shown up for the most part. Um, speaking of in-games right now, guys, uh, halfway through the fourth quarter here on Friday afternoon, we have the uh, Spurs up by nine over the Jazz. Spurs are at eight and a half point favorite. They're winning by nine right now. Um, I'll go around real quick. Uh, Rob Vino, did you have anything on this game? Anything you're looking at? Only about a half a quarter remaining. 
Yeah, I didn't. I mean, I almost was tempted to take the Jazz plus the points regardless of sitting four starters, but I didn't. Um, looks like it's going to come down to the wire where point spreads are concerned. An 11.5 point move on that game. Um, maybe only 10.5. I think it closed 8.5, but still, big move. Utah decided to rest some guys, so you have to be leery of that um, game by game. Who's going to rest? Again, we talked about it yesterday. Load management still happens in the bubble. Yeah, Teddy, I mean, the Jazz opened as a two-and-a-half-point favorite and some spots went off as eight-and-a-half, nine-point dog. Uh, what do you think of such a ma massive line move there? As he said, it was basically based on information. Well, yeah, but the, the thing that shocked me was that the information was out there at the open. Yeah, I know. Okay? It wasn't like people, you know, the, the information on the, the Jazz are going to sit Gobert and Mitchell and everybody else. That was out yesterday, and the markets didn't react till late last night slash early this morning. So, there was a window there uh, where you were able that uh, the info was out there and you could have gotten uh, the uh, San Antonio Spurs at a, you know, I mean, it was, it was one and a half this morning. Uh, but uh, again, you can't, I should say it was one and a half uh, last night. This morning was eight and a half when you woke up. So it was one of those deals where if you bet in the overnight hours, you were very happy. Uh, if you waited, it wasn't such a, such a good result. Yeah, and the uh, total drop from uh, 228 down to 225 and a half range, so not as big of a move to the under, but it does look like this game's going to stay under the total. Actually, I don't know. I guess it's on a pace right now for the number. It's at 203 with six minutes to go, so it's going to probably be pretty close. Uh, Ski, what were your thoughts on this game? Did you see anything early? Uh, I looked at this game early, and I think I, did, I think I even saw the Spurs at a plus number. Uh, maybe that was before the news was out. Uh, but, yeah, big line move, and um, – just looks like they're going to take care of business. It's like what Teddy said, who wants this game more? That's how you have to do it. And Spurs, if they have any chance, they had to win this game. And that's what they're doing right now. Yeah, and I mean, it's amazing to me, guys, you know, with that line adjustment. Right now, it's on pace to land on maybe both the side and total. <laughs> right now, it's sitting on exactly nine. They went off as an eight and a half point, nine point dog. And with six minutes to go here, it's at 203. And uh, the total's around 225 and a half. So it probably is actually a slightly on an overpace right now. I'd have to get the calculator out to figure that out for sure. But, yeah, I wasn't involved in the early game. Um, but it was interesting to see such a massive line move and definitely wanted to touch on that. A uh, reminder to all the viewers out there, wagertalk.com is where you can get best bets from all these gentlemen, including myself, Steve Merrill, Rob Vino, Teddy Covers, Ski Profit, wagertalk.com. And if you use promo code WEEK69, W E E K six nine week sixty nine. You get a full week, seven days all sports from any and all cappers that you want for sixty nine dollars. And you can mix and match. You can use multiple cappers with that promo code. Both wagertalk.com, sportsmemo.com, week sixty nine. It's good and th through this week, and so you only have a few days left. It'll be the last chance you hear it on this show before we're back on Monday. So take advantage. Week sixty nine, full seven days all sports from any and all cappers that you want. Wagertalk.com and sportsmemo.com. Uh, guys, we'll get in here first to uh, the uh, the first game on the board. We have a 4 o'clock Eastern game, as we do each and every day. Right now, the Oklahoma City Thunder, about a three-and-a-half-point favorite over the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, Rob Vino, any thoughts on this one? Yeah, boy, I mean, the, uh, they're leaking oil in Memphis right now. Since they entered the bubble, they haven't won a game. It was, seemed as if, you know, with the lead they had, they would have been fairly comfortable to get a spot in the playoffs, but it's not comfortable right now, Stephen. I tell you, these injuries that have gone on, um, significant injuries that have happened here in the bubble, Jaron Jackson Jr. from Memphis, Aaron Gordon and Jonathan Isaac for Orlando, Ben Simmons for the Sixers. Um, this injury, Jackson, I think, is important as any. The other day, their front court, starting front court, gets outscored 40-18 to 18 in that game against Utah. OKC, not the... You know, not a physical front court, but certainly neither was the Jazz. Uh, Joe Ingles, Finesse, and Royce O'Neal, a little bit of a bull, but not much. Um, I think Oklahoma City, even without Schroeder, they showed the other day that they have the capability to shut teams down, although the L.A. Lakers have shot the basketball bad. You could blame it on that, or you could attribute it to Oklahoma City defense, whichever you like. I'm going to say that, you know, if Memphis – is going to get a game, though. It would have to be right here, Steve. This is almost the cornered animal theory. Back into a corner. You've got to win a game at some point. Oklahoma City um, is certainly capable of being beaten. So if I had to look, I would probably look the Memphis way, but I'd have to hold my nose and do it because they've just played so bad so far. Um, all the quotes out of there are, 
you know, we're learning, we're getting better, we're doing this, we're doing that. We're not uh, nervous right now, but it's a young team. They're probably a little nervous right now. Yeah, I mean, Memphis better get it together. They're not going to have much more to play for or learn from here in the next week or so when the playoffs begin. They'll be on the outside looking in. Uh, hey, Tony, I wanted to welcome you to the show. Sorry for not seeing you down there earlier. That's you're, okay. Uh, My the fault. new system we've got here, you kind of float in the bigger time. I didn't see you on the bottom of the screen, but you've been let, locked in and listening still on, on the sidelines. We'll get to you here in a moment. Um, Teddy, just wanted to get your thoughts so quickly on this uh, this daytime game, if you had anything or if you see any edge here with the, uh, the Thunder and Grizzlies. So Steven Adams isn't supposed to play for OKC. Uh, and Shooter isn't supposed to play. Uh, I mean, Shooter's out of the bubble, uh, so he's definitely not going to play uh, uh, for the Thunder. Those are significant losses for a team that isn't overly deep. And the corner and animal theory, I understand Memphis hasn't played good basketball here in the bubble. I understand all the pressures on them. But we're also talking about a team that is still currently the number eight seed. They're not even the ninth seed. They're still the eighth seed in the West. They're the team to beat. They're the team that uh, that in theory has less pressure on them than some of the other teams that are chasing them. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Memphis come through uh, with the upset today. That said, it's not in my pocket. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they do finally turn it on. They've, you know, eight seed coming in here and they lose their first three. It's uh, definitely not been a good showing in the bubble so far. Uh, Ski, what are your thoughts on Thunder and Memphis? Uh, right now, three and a half point Oklahoma City favored, total 221 against the Grizzlies. I agree. Those are both significant injuries. And usually when Steven Adams is out, I would look immediately to the over. Um, but with Schroeder out, that's kind of some of their pace gone as well. Uh, if Memphis is going to win this game, I think they do so with pace. I think they play fast. I think they attack the rim without Steven's down, uh, Steven Adams down there. And I agree. I think Memphis can maybe get it done. They still, they're still in the playoff spot. So until somebody takes them out, I mean, they have just as much motivation as anybody. Uh, I'll take Memphis with OKC shorthanded. So, Tony Finn, um, how did you do yesterday? I'll let you talk about Thursday. Did you see anything that jumped out to you? We talked about all that uncertainty coming into the show yesterday. I had, I had one NBA game yesterday, which cashed, and I didn't hedge it. That was the, the, Lake, uh, the uh, Houston Rockets and the Lakers. I got that early, and um, the parameters I set on that were, were uh, wide enough that that uh, the play was good to go even on the closing number. I went one and two in baseball, so disappointing there. What, what's your take on this daytime game here at uh, 4 Eastern, uh, Thunder and Grizzlies? Do you think Memphis gets back on track finally? Uh, here's I, – I disagree with Ski. What a shocker, huh? <laughs> um, I Listen, Memphis – I mentioned this. Memphis gets the majority of their points in the paint. That it, They're one of the – they're the top team of points in the paint per 100 possessions. Um, Oklahoma City is an average team stopping points in the paint without a big. Uh, I, here, I, I think that Memphis is deliberate today. I think that they take the ball to the rim. And the last thing they want to do is get in any track meet. Even uh, Listen, not that Thunder or any fast up and down the court with Chris Paul uh, policing you know, the bubble. Uh, as as he does, and I, if you look at the points, the Lakers scored against OKC, and we know that Lakers weren't trying, or they, you know, they were in, in casual mode. But for the most part, I thought this number was too high. I thought it was five points too high. Yeah, and by the way, there's only one other team that started 0 and 4 like Memphis, and that's the Wizards, of course, who are by far the worst team coming in um, to the bubble. The difference is, of course, Memphis is in the eight seed, and they're still in the eight seed by half a game. 0 and 8. Yeah, so I mean, it's like they almost have to go like two and six, and someone else has to go, you know, yeah, five and three, six and two, just to blow that. But yeah, Memphis is trying to play their way out. Uh, so this is an important game today. There's no question the motivation should be there. It's just a question if the results will be. By the way, uh, as we're doing this live, guys, as we do every weekday, three p.m. Eastern, this line has dropped just now to three in many spots. So it's another game that has moved as we've talked about it. Uh, Grizzlies now plus three. There are some plus three and a halves out there. So if you like the Grizzlies. Grab the plus three and a half right now. If you're looking at the Thunder, definitely wait as there's some minus threes out there now. And a very square book out there, which should remain nameless, the most square offshore book in the world is still four. So I think that's interesting right now. We're seeing minus three at the sharp books. <laughs> what are the four. initials of that book? Yeah, they, 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 exactly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and they've changed the name in the last 10 years or so. And uh, Yeah. 
Uh, it's worth noting the total is getting hit under right now as well. Uh, Do you guys see anything? That somebody somebody might be out, if it would be my guess, for uh, Oklahoma City maybe. And you guys mentioned some names there you know that were. Adams out, Scala out, Schroeder out for OKC. Ferguson upgraded a probable. Jackson out uh, for Memphis, along with, you know, Jones and Winslow have been out. Got you. Yeah, but it does look like uh, there's a move to the under, as Teddy said, and also a little bit of money, a little bit of a line move, not necessarily money, but a line move to the Grizzlies as well. They're now plus three in some spots. Plus three at the Sharp Books, plus four at the Square Books. Viewers, figure that out. Do what you will with that information. Um, let's look at the next game here on the schedule, guys. Um, we only have we have a game at five Eastern today. They don't, they normally do back you know two games at four Eastern. We have a four Eastern, and now we have a five Eastern, two Pacific. Sacramento Kings minus five and a half now in a lot of spots. Open four, it's up to five and a half against the Brooklyn Nets. Totals around two thirty one and a half. Uh, Teddy, uh, actually, Rob, I'll start with you again. Um, what do you think here? Kings Lane five and a half. Spent a little bit of money on Sacramento so far. Yeah, I don't know that I would get involved in the side, Steve, but the Sacramento totals are you know, almost a mechanical play right now. Play them over. They're three and one over in the bubble. The three times they've gone over, they've scored. The game has resulted in 248 plus, which is 17 points, 16 half points higher than what we're looking at here with a 231 and a half. Um, Nets are missing some players. Uh, Jared Allen won't play today. He played the other day in all likelihood. Um, Joe Harris won't play, and of course, Jamal Crawford will not play, but I don't think that stops the Nets from scoring. It's just based on Sacramento's defensive efforts so far. Really doesn't Rob, matter. they're both available. They just announced. What is it, Ski? They just announced they're both available. Yeah, Harris and okay. Allen are in. Yeah, there you go. Um, now that they're both available, you probably get even more. See, Brooklyn has a chance to clinch the final spot here, I think, or the seventh spot here. Um, so it's going to be a big game for them. They had the opportunity the other night, but they got run out of the gym by Boston. I just, Steve, watching Sacramento play, there's no way to look at them except over. This is a good team to run up and down the floor with. Sacramento shot lights out yesterday. And normally, you know, back-to-back -back games, I wouldn't look for a shooting effort like the Kings had yesterday. But they don't necessarily need one like that in order to put up a lot of points. So for me, it would be over or pass. Yeah, and Rob, you know I agree with that. As I've said almost every show when we talk about the Kings coming into the bubble, they're a pure play over for me. Um, in any and all games. I used that as the best bet last Friday. My first release in the bubble was an easy 249 over winner against the Spurs. That line was just 224. How nice and cheap that looks in hindsight now uh, with knowing how those two teams like to play. Uh, but the Nets a perfect 4-0 to the over so far in their four games. Kings 3-1 and to the over. So uh, Teddy covers 7-1 and over so far with these two teams combined. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't talk anyone out on overplay in this one. I was interested in the sign in the side – uh, and I know the, 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 I'm a, I know you guys, I know Rob does it the way I do it, where you're making your numbers before you're seeing the numbers that are out there. And there was no line in this game. I said, man, I'm like, if I can get Sacramento minus one, right. off that win, I'm, I'm, I love it. Yeah. And it, what is it? Open four. Now it's five and a half. Ten. Yeah. 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 And I'm, sitting there going, yeah. I, 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 I'm thinking it's uh, the, my, my number was literally was my, uh, and I got the Kings rated re relatively highly. And I thought yesterday's win was a momentum for these guys. So, uh, the you know, the concept here was Sacramento. But, the, unfortunately, the, the line didn't come uh, in a range that I was comfortable uh, with. So, uh, I didn't get to the window with it. You know, uh, I, I love the, 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 the uh, comment that you were talking about Darren Fox in fantasy tonight. Um, uh, that makes a ton of sense. Yeah, and by the way, that's that's mid-major Matt. Matt Joseph, he will be hosting the baseball show. Uh, he not only follows NBA, but he's actually really specializes in baseball. So, Matt, great to have you in the chat. And other viewers, always great to have you all in the chat as well, whether it's live on Facebook, Periscope, YouTube. And by the way, the new system I've got here in the control center, I can see the chats from Facebook and Periscope, which we couldn't see the previous week. So I can really monitor everything. It's nice. It confuses me at times. That's why Tony hung out for five extra minutes in the penalty box because I didn't see him down there. But there's good and bad with the system as we're learning as we go. Uh, Teddy, I love that you mentioned that you made the line one, yet you're still not playing the game. Because normally, 
you know, somebody hears that, they're like, wow, that line is four and a half points higher than his number. The thing no, is, no, 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 the other way around. My, 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 no, I, I, I wanted Sacramento. The concept was I want, I, I, I want to bet on the Kings, but my line of the game was one, and the Kings are five and a half. There's no way I'm going to, if I'm like, oh, I like them at one, which is more my number, is I'm not going to lay an extra four and a half points. Right, but that's my point is that not it's not always just about your numbers. You also sometimes have a situation you like going in or a team you like, and they both have to click. Because if you had no opinion on the game, there you could say there is value getting four and a half points. But you like the Kings, but the line is too high, so that makes it a no play, basically. And that's exactly how I handicap as well. But I thought that was something good to point out to the viewers, especially the new new betters that are in the chat room there. You know, people ask me, guys, going into shows, like, you know, before, you know, who do you like in this game or in the Super Bowl? Who do you like next week if these two teams play in the Super Bowl? And obviously, I have a matchup I like, but if you give me 20 points with either team, I like them. You know, so it's always, it, I've always said it depends on the line, but it, it's really the line and the matchup. Um, and that's a textbook example what Teddy's talking about. He liked the Kings coming in. He was hoping to get them around minus one. It's five and a half, but he's not going to take the other side because he still likes the situation for the Kings, but there's no line value. Uh, Ski Profit. What are your thoughts on this? The line opened four, now up to five and a half. They're definitely uh, pricing in some uh, some adjustments there as far as Sacramento, especially considering the Brooklyn Nets, as we know, is a 19-point dog, just beat the Bucks a couple games ago. Yeah, Nets are capable of playing well in the bubble. Uh, I would look more towards the total. Brooklyn, we've seen them play fast. Sacramento's been playing fast. They're playing fast into the regular season a little bit. So I, like, um, I, I would lean more towards the over rather than play a side. I don't want to back Sacramento with all the points and uh, I'm just not too confident back in Brooklyn at the same time. So I'll go over. Yeah. And once again, these two teams are combined seven and one to the over. Um, and we know Sacramento is not playing defense. Uh, Tony Finn, what are your thoughts? Uh, everybody said they, they have reiterated or they have at least covered all of my thoughts. I like, listen, I like Levert and I like Joe Harris to have big games. I like the over as well. And, um, you know, Tony, I'll start the next game with you and um, yeah. let you get a little more thoughts in on this one, and then we'll throw it over to Ski. But, you know, Teddy had that great stat coming in the other day that um, straight-up winners were 27-3 and three ATS. Yeah. And then after three games in the other night, they were 30-4. and four, And two of those four losses were the Sixers. All other teams yes. had gone 30-2 and two at the time. Yes. When they cover, uh, when they won straight up, they'd cover. The Sixers were 0-2. <laughs> Um, to, and so uh, what are your thoughts here on this game, Tony? It goes here at 6 Eastern, uh, 6.30 Eastern, and this is our TNT national TV game, the early evening game. Right now the Sixers are five-point favorite over Orlando, total around 222 and a half. We talked about Orlando last time. We, I think we all, at least most of us, agreed that, um, that this team, after uh, the loss of one of their key players, one of their key pieces, that they were hanging their heads. They didn't look very good, and – I I think that remains the same. As bad as Philly has, or as inconsistent as they've been, um, I think they really they they either have to be sleepwalking uh, uh, on quaaludes or simply, uh, you know, uh, asleep at the wheel, not to have a uh, basically a coast a a free ride uh, a, a win and be able to uh, not over minute their their starting five. I like Billy. Ski, uh, is it the hell no Sixers for you, like the yes, hell yes Suns, or what are your thoughts on Philly in this game, minus five? You know, I'm not running to the window to back Philly at all. In fact, I probably would look more towards Orlando. Um, I just – I don't want to back Philly, and I know Orlando has something to play for. I would probably look more towards the total in this game as well. Orlando, they've shown that they can play fast. They've had, what, 14 overs in a row before they played the Raptors, a uh, great defensive team. Philly, they're not a great defensive team at all. And Philly is capable of putting up some points as well. So I would look probably towards over the, what is it, 222.5? Yeah, I'm seeing the current total right now on this one, about 222.5, and, and really no movement. Um, Teddy, total has held steady. We've actually seen a little money, Teddy, I think, on the Sixers. I think it opened minus four in some spots, now minus five. Do you have any trust in Philadelphia? No, <laughs> absolutely not. All right. I don't blame uh, you. Well, I mean, that's not, not mince words. All right. This Brett Brown called his team out flat out called his team out after the second game in the bubble where they, uh, they escaped, uh, with the Milton three pointer and beat the Spurs 132 to 130. I think it was, they escaped with that win. And Brown was furious. He said, we're not doing that next time. We're playing defense. We're, we're going to bring it. 
<laughs> you watch the game against the Wizards, the intensity was low. The energy was low. It was one of the, I mean, I was watching that game like a hawk. And to see if Philly was going to respond, and they didn't. So now they're laying points to an Orlando team, and I know that the, the Magic aren't going to have Gordon tonight. Uh, you know, that's a big loss. Uh, it's not just Jonathan Isaacs, it's, it's Gordon too. But they, Philly just lost Ben Simmons. They don't seem to be playing with the urgency that I thought they were going to, and defensively, they stink right now. I want no part of the Sixers laying points. Magic or pass. Yeah, and keep in mind, uh, something I've pointed out a few times is that Philly had the biggest home road dichotomy of any team coming into the bubble. They were 29-2 and two this year at home. They were 10-24 and 24 in true road games before they've gone 2-1 and one on these neutral courts. But Rob Vino, you can't really say those two wins were impressive because as Teddy said, they squeaked it out against the Spurs as a seven-point favorite, a non-cover win against the Wizards. They were a 10.5-point favorite. They won by nine. Uh, Rob, do you think they have anything to play for right now? I mean, back-to-back -back wins is what they're probably looking at, even though they haven't been impressive. Yeah, I mean, at some point, you have to develop some kind of momentum if you're the Philadelphia 76ers. I mean, all talk coming in is they have their eyes set on an Eastern Conference championship, and they're far from that at this point in time. I was up on my soapbox anti-Philadelphia the other day. I won't get back up there again, but I'll bring a couple of things into – just from a fundamental standpoint, guys, it, it'll be interesting to see if Al Horford works better in the offense now without Ben Simmons available here. And it'll be interesting to see if they plant Embiid down in the paint instead of floating him around the three-point line now that Ben isn't your power forward taking up space down there. Um, I'm interested to see how this team reacts fundamentally. On the other side, you lose Jonathan Isaac, you lose Aaron Gordon, it's your entire starting front court, and now Orlando's going to have to go small. And James Ennis was already starting. You're going to see Terrence Ross and James Ennis as your starting forwards in all likelihood. Uh, so for Orlando, it could be a game of pace here. Uh, so the 222 and a half, you know, while it looks on the surface, Steve, like how could I play over? Without Aaron Gordon, without Ben Simmons, uh, I should be on under. It may just be that the pace turns around here for that side, but maybe slows down for the other side if Embiid is a guy that they want to just feed in the paint. So for me, it's a very difficult game to handicap. Um, I know Orlando is interested in winning the game. Seems like they're a little bit more interested than Philadelphia is at this point. But I would, if I was going to lose one of the two, I'd rather lose Simmons than Embiid. I think Embiid is a guy that can carry the team. Um, ben Simmons certainly becomes a deterrent. I think in one game here that was close down the stretch, maybe the San Antonio game, he took one shot in the final five minutes and 40 seconds, just afraid to shoot the basketball. So uh, it's it's tough. Either way, I'll have to watch this and maybe assess from there both of these teams going forward. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big Simmons guy. I think he could definitely end up being a very overrated player. And Tony Finn, I see a, I see a saw buck out there, so I'm going to let you jump that's, in right now. That's Tim want actually? That's All 10 right. oh, bucks. You, you're feeling uh, good after I, 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 They don't need – They don't – your back roll, <laughs> bank roll the other day, right? They, <laughs> both of these guys over to the, the right-hand side of the Hollywood Squares, they don't need Ben Simmons today, especially if Orlando goes small. And Embiid's been lights out. Uh, in truth, Ben Simmons has been a, a detriment to this team. I agree. And, and Vukov, unless, unless Vukovic has a huge game, Orlando has no chance today. And that's – I got a saw buck. I'll, I got as many as 10 – uh, that says I'm right. <laughs> Anybody want some action on the other side of that? So you're taking the Orlando Magic, Tony, and we'll say that's yeah, plus I, five. Who wants yeah. the Sixers minus five? I personally am not getting involved in that one. I'm not sure anybody else here wants it, though. I'm just stunned to see Tony with a hundred dollar bill. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, well, <laughs> don't say it too loud because the wife might run run down here and grab it. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, she's not watching live right now on Wager Talk TV, right, Tony? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> See, I think I think we all kind of agree, though, that the Sixers are a dicey favorite right now in this game. You know, we had that situation well, the other day where it was kind of like, what was it, Suns or pass, and the Suns went out right at plus nine. Yeah. Would, would uh, everyone kind of agree that they don't want anything to do with the Sixers here? I do. I'm on them. Oh, you want the Sixers? I, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Want, I, want, I, I totally the, misunderstood that. I thought you were saying you like no. you did not want anything to do with the Sixers. No, I want everything to do with the Sixers. They don't oh, need Tim Simmons. They got to tell uh, me who you want straightforward. This is like when you walk up to the ticket, you know, the, the sports book. And, huh? There we go. We got to take yeah. her now. I, you know, listen, I'm back down. I, I think I only owe you tw uh, two saw bucks now. So um, your call, you can go two or you can go 20, whatever you want to do. 
I think we might disagree on one other game. So okay, well wait then, let's and then just, we'll make it, then, and I'll break out the other hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Wait, he's got more than one. More than I, well, <laughs> it's a it's it's smoke and mirrors, mirrors. It's the, the nickel slots paid off well last night, huh? <laughs> my, on my back patio, I got an old uh, Bally's '92 Bally's, but it pays off because I got it. <laughs> I know the secret, man. <laughs> you know how to hit it just right on the handle. All right, yeah. so right now, so uh, Ski, you've got uh, Magic plus five. Tony, you give it, you're taking Sixers minus five against them. I correct? am. I am. All right, so we got one there. We got a few more games to go, and I think there might be some more at Ski Profit. I'll start off with you, though. Is this the game that you like? Uh, we got the Pelicans minus eight over the Wizards. By the way, um, we do have an in-show wager live on this one because Teddy Covers and Tony have one going right now that says – Teddy said the Wizards will win one of these final four games. Tony said they will not. So you guys have action on this. Uh, Ski, do you want to add more action? You've got Pelicans minus eight right now. And I know you said earlier at the open you have not looked how they you have not liked how they've looked so far. Yeah, they've looked terrible. And um they won't have Zion tonight. Not that Zion's looked too great. Uh, but I'm looking at I've looked all throughout this year. Pelicans as a favorite with the line between four and uh, eleven. They're 10 and 1 against the spread. The last game is the only one that they've lost. Uh, I think if Pelicans have any life, it's going to be tonight. And if they're going to beat anybody anybody by double digits, it'll be the Wizards. So I'd have to take the Pelicans minus the eight. And uh, if I'm looking at the total, it'll be over or nothing. Wizards don't play D, Pelicans don't play D. So Pelicans minus the eight and over. Yeah. And obviously, with, you know, Zion completely out. The odds makers, you know, are going to usually drop the total, but this actually is 236 right now. And there were some 231s out there, um, but I think that playground mentality could definitely happen. So I, I see where you're going with that. Teddy, you know, I know you've got some action on the Wizards winning the game here with Tony. I would say this is probably as good of a spot as they have, at least for me. I, I would be one spot I'm comfortable backing them. They've got <laughs> Oklahoma City, Milwaukee, Boston on deck after this. Is this the one they got to get tonight, Teddy? No, they don't have that. They could easily win the last one. And the other part, which I couldn't get another, a taker for, but I said the Wizards are going to cover the last five games. Yeah, they're going to cover that. when they don't, and they're already 1-0 ATS. So yeah. um, even if they don't win a game, if you make money with them uh, in uh, <laughs> against the spread, I'll be happy with that. That said, they can win this game. Yeah. Hey. All right, New Orleans on the second of back-to-backs. All right, New Orleans coming off a defensive showing what they give up, 49 in the first and 40 in the third? Yeah. You know – it was wow. embarrassing, and Gentry was not amused by that after the game. Look at the Wizards' last three. All right, the first game against Philly uh, against Phoenix was a track meet. Since then, way under, way under, way under. It's a team that struggles to find offense. Mm -hmm. It's a Pelicans team that's talking, and it wasn't just coach quotes; it was player quotes talking about we got to step it up on D. Could this be a sneaky under? 236, definitely some room for a sneaky under, huh? And uh, we saw some 231s initially, I believe, on this. So, yeah, Teddy, if it plays out that way, this could be one of those games that flies under. Yeah, I mean, if the pace is different and there's a defensive intensity, whoa, you got to like under 236. It's just that uncertainty. You know, and Rob, that uncertainty is what kills me as a capper and it keeps me off games like this. Uh, what, do you, what is your take here on, on the Wizards? Yeah, I would kind of agree with that. Um, in a regular situation, New Orleans, Washington, you would think it's just going to go back and forth and be points upon points. But the New Orleans team, like Teddy pointed out, they've given up 77 first half points in back to back games now. They're trailing the Clippers 77 45 at half. And then they go out and trail 77 70 yesterday. So um, I saw a lot of those same quotes. Hey, listen, New Orleans is not. Um, the best defensive team, even when they're committed. But I do think they'll be committed at least from the get go, which, you know, for me could be a look at the first half under as well. Um, but second half on back to backs, perhaps you get some fatigue in New Orleans jump shots. There's a lot of reasons when you comb through it that 236, a large number. Um, we could get somewhere to, you know, 121, 112, and that stays under the total. So for me, I think if I had to play, I would look towards the under. Just don't trust the Pelicans right now, although there's a gut feeling that I have that they probably come out and play extremely well here in cover, but I'm not willing to risk any money on it. Um, I would say if I had to risk, I'd be on the under. 
In the first half under, by the way, Rob, is 119 and a half. So it's about three points higher than the second half total is projected to be. Um, and that's often the case in the NBA college basketball, the exact opposite. Second half totals are, you know, 60% of the game total. But NBA, it's slightly higher in the first half sometimes. So you do get a little bit more uh, points there. Pelicans four and a half in the first half, eight for the game. So there again, the odds makers are saying also they'll come out a little stronger. I just think for me, the uncertainty comes with how do they bounce back after that terrible defensive showing yesterday. You know, and by the way, uh, viewers, there are three and a half games out of the eighth spot right now with four to go. Um, so this is no question a must win for them. Two and a half, sorry, two and a half out with four to go. Um, and, and, so, yeah. it's, and it's a nine spot they need to get into. That's Eight true. Spot, yeah, that's right. that's a good point. Games, yeah, because they right? had the play in situation. And Teddy, let me ask you quick with the Wizards, how's that working for them? I mean, are they because I are they still going to have a play in spot even though they're mathematically can't catch the eight seed? Now, how's that going to no, work? They had to be these? within four games. And gotcha. not, uh, I, I think they have to – if they won out and the Nets lost out, maybe. Right. But that's not – you know, the Wizards aren't uh, – I'm hoping to get one win out of the Wizards. I'm hoping to get four. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they're eight behind the Nets and they're seven and a half behind the Magic. Yet, if you look at the standings, they haven't shown that the seven and eight seeds have clinched yet. And that's what I was trying to figure out. So, they have to be within four to have a play in. Yes. And that's interesting because when the uh, season – when the bubble restarted – uh, sports books had it like plus 800, no play in there, but they had like minus 600. The West would have a eight, nine play in. And that's just because there are so many teams, obviously. Uh, viewers out there, once again, we won't have a weekend show here, but we will be back Monday through Friday, every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern live for NBA tip off here on Wager Talk TV. If you like baseball, then you should, because there's great money making opportunities in baseball. There are two weekend shows, Saturday and Sunday, as always, at noon Eastern, nine Pacific. MLB first pitch continues this weekend. Matt Joseph stepping in to host. I'll be on the Sunday show as well. Tony, you'll be on Saturday and Sunday, I believe. Yes, um, Dave, Dave Koken, of course, the usual suspect there. Nine uh, Pacific, noon Eastern, nine Pacific, both Saturday and Sunday, MLB first pitch. And boy, do I love doing those Saturday and Sunday shows because the games start right after it. I mean, if you yeah. guys like these daytime games we're talking about in the NBA, uh, you'll love first pitch weekend edition. And I recommend, highly recommend you watch it live, especially on Sunday when a lot of daytime games go off. But, of course, if you missed it, you can always log right in on Facebook. You can check on YouTube. Of course, it's archived YouTube every day. Uh, but once again, NBA tip-off, Monday through Friday, 3 Eastern. First pitch, 2 Eastern, but noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, Saturday and Sunday. Matt Joseph will be hosting that great show. Uh, we got another daytime or nighttime game here, guys. Uh, let's look at this uh, nightcap between the Celtics and Raptors. Uh, Tony, what, do you, what is your take on this one? Uh, two of the better teams in the East, and uh, we've talked about Toronto can be a real good defensive team at times. Um, what's your take, Tony, on Raptors and Celtics at 9 Eastern? Well, at uh, the last show that we did yesterday, I said I thought that the Toronto was uh, the best team in the bubble right now. They're playing the best basketball. They've done everything that Nurse has asked them to do and more. And Boston has failed miserably defensively. They failed to get stops when they needed them. That's why they lost. The, that's why they – we're losers, and and for the most part, when you see Boston scoring 145 points, uh, I don't care who if they're playing. You know, George Jetson and Fred Flintstone. <laughs> that that is not. It, I don't think that's a good thing for Boston. I don't think that Brad Stevens wants anything to do with that kind of. And I and I don't understand uh, how this team is not uh, at least they don't even look good. They don't even look like they're they don't even look like they're together or on the same page defensively. So um, I'm on Toronto here. I'm not on the game at all. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, Ski. You know, coming in, I think a lot of people thought the teams that could give the Bucks trouble, obviously the Raptors, but, you know, the Celtics and Sixers were getting a lot of love from people, and they've definitely underachieved so far. Uh, Ski, what's your thoughts on this game tonight, Raptors-Celtics? Not the Sixers for me, um, but the Celtics are showing them some love. But as Tony said, Toronto's been the best team in the bubble. They've been the most consistent team. I don't understand why the line is going back down. I think, I mean, I don't see why they don't do it again. Boston's been inconsistent. I don't think that they have a, another good game uh, in this spot here. So I would take Toronto to win this one. Yeah, and Teddy, you know, it's interesting. Normally the team that wins the NBA title, you think maybe they have a hangover the next year. They wouldn't care about this whole restart bubble situation. But the fact that they lost, you know, their star player and they lost Leonard last year, it's almost like they have a chip on their shoulder this year and they have something to prove. Um, Teddy, what are your thoughts on Raptors Celtics? So the money's coming right now for Boston. It looks to be like it's Kemba Walker money. Um, Walker has been upgraded to probable. Uh, there were some concerns about his ability availability. Uh, so it looks like he's going to play, which 
indicates that you know the, the market's knee jerk to a lot of the player uh, in or out. Uh, although Walker's worth something, you know, Wanamaker's been good, but I don't want Wanamaker as my starter. I want Walker and then Wanamaker off the bench. But um, I put up uh, Toronto as a free play. You can read the full analysis right now uh, at sportsmember.com or wagertalk.com. I agree 100% with Tony. And it has everything to do with the two basic factors he mentioned. One, Toronto's playing defense. Two, Toronto's hungry. Enough said. It's also third and four, uh, third game and four nights for Boston, fourth and six. Well, so I wouldn't be surprised at all. If the Celtics hang around three and a half quarters, the last six minutes of the fourth, that's Raptor time. Yeah, I like that angle, Tony, uh, Teddy, about, you know, I mean, they're not traveling, but they are playing a lot of games in a short, concise time. And I do think that's something now that these teams have three, four games under their belts in a week we have to start looking at because that one extra day here or there can make a difference. And um, it is only, I believe, what the fourth game for Toronto, but it's the fifth game for Boston. So it's starting to come into this situation. Um, Rob Vino, what are your thoughts here on this nightcap between the uh, Raptors and Celtics? Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, guys, you know, um, before they restarted here playing games, um, we talked about how Toronto, to me, was the most motivated team. You just look at what their individual players did during the three-month layoff right down the line. Um, Ananobi, uh, Siakam is the only guy who really didn't touch a basketball for the three months. And for him, I guess it was just to keep his legs fresh because when he came back to practice, Nick Nurse had nothing but great things to say about how he looks. So up and down the lineup, these guys wanted it. Uh, they're proving that they want it here. I'll go back to something that Tony's been harping on all season long. That's another major difference in this game. Boston And, and Tony, I would say this. Brad Stevens loves to play defense. We know that from his Butler days. We know that from when he first got to Boston. But the, he might, may just be at the realization point that this team doesn't have it defensively. You've talked all season long about how there's no pivot play. You have no pivot play, nothing in the paint against Toronto. You're going to get eaten alive because that's a huge front line that attacks, attacks, and attacks again. Boston's going to have to be quicker. Boston's going to have to run to beat them. I just don't know that they can do so. Um, Kyle Lowry's in a miserable slump right now, but maybe he breaks out tonight. I think Toronto's got to be the play all the way around here. They clinch a two seed with a win tonight. Um, I don't know that a win tonight and a clinch of a number two seed would even stop them from continuing on for the remainder of these eight games. Teams just got I a agree. lot to prove here. And um, I think the fundament that fundamentally it just matches way up in their favor. Yeah, and I mean, this is a team that plays excellent defense. They've also been very strong on the road this season. If you look at their overall road record, it's been almost as good, if not better, than their home record. So there are definitely some things to like. I mean, I think the Raptors, especially come playoff time, will be a dangerous team there against a, a less experienced Bucks team, just as we saw last year, even though it's a slightly different lineup. You know, guys, we got a couple minutes here left. Um, we got a lot of weekend games. I know there's not necessarily many lines out of any of them. There might be some for Saturday, I guess, but um, – I'll start with you, Tony, if you don't have anything, that's fine. But, uh, Tony, first I want to find out what you do have today at wagertalk.com for Friday, and then let me know if there's anything maybe you're looking at for the weekend. Right now I just see one line for the weekend, guys, and it's Milwaukee 10.5 point, uh, 9 to 10 point favorite over Dallas. But uh, let us know what you got Friday here and if you maybe see anything on the weekend card. Are you talking to me? You said Tony. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Tony. I yeah. wasn't sure you said Teddy or Tony. Yeah, no uh, problem. I actually, I looked at, I didn't look at very much basketball at all. I, I studied today's line, uh, today's card. As, as long and as hard as I could stand to, and then moved on to baseball. A, a, but as far as games go, um, I thought the interesting games, the intriguing games were tonight. And, I, and I, I, I wish I had something to throw at you that was profound and accurate, but I don't. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, there's no lines up for Saturday or Sunday. We'll be back Monday, of course, 3 Eastern each weekday, Monday through Friday. We don't have the weekend show. Um, Ski Profit, uh, what do you have for Friday at Wager Talk? And if you see anything on the weekend, throw it out. But if not, no, no worries. Yeah, I just have one uh, WNBA play going tonight. And on the weekend, I'm looking right now. Um, the one that stands out to me, it would be – we talked about we don't trust Philadelphia, and we talked about Portland's playing extremely well. Uh, so I will look at that game on Sunday and see what kind of line we get for Portland. Yeah, that's at 6.30 Eastern on Sunday. That is an interesting matchup. Of course, I had a strong 5% best bet on Portland over the Rockets earlier in the week. So, it's, And I've also uh, had the Sixers earlier in the week when they won but failed to cover. So two teams I'll be watching closely as well. Uh, Teddy Covers, what do you got for Friday? Uh, I'm locked and loaded with uh, one of the games we talked about here on the show in the NBA. I also have an MLB selection available 
uh, right now, both the Sports Memo uh, and WagerTalk.com. But again, don't buy, don't buy any individual play. <laughs> uh, it's just I, I don't ever. You can't. It's really hard to win long term when you're buying individual. Yeah. Watch uh, this, Teddy. Uh, this is what you're talking about, right? Promo code week 69. There we go. Right sure. here. I mean, you know, I know they have an MLB 399 for the MLB season. I'm sure there's something, a uh, promo code for NBA as well. Um, you know, if you want somebody's plays, get somebody's plays. If you're trying around, you know, a big game hunting, uh, I wish you luck. I haven't seen many that have had success uh, using that strategy. Uh, in terms of the weekend, um, you know, I'm really interested in the Utah-Denver game tomorrow. The Nuggets have shown a lot. And I got a great quote from Malone. Uh, Mike Malone talked about how he's worried about the backcourt and coming back. He's like, we're, we're not waiting for those guys. They're, they're, they're going to join the train uh, once it's already rolling. Um, Denver might be worth a look tomorrow against the Utah team that may be shorthanded and will be on the second of back-to-backs. Yeah, and they're both, um, as of now, they're both two and two straight up in the bubble. And that game, uh, Saturday afternoon, so it's not a late game either. It's actually an early afternoon game at 3.30 Eastern. So it's it, that interesting. And once again, I like the scheduling angles. You know, it's starting to come into play more and more here, I think. Uh, Rob Vino, what do you got going for Friday at wagertalk.com? Uh, Major League Baseball, best bet is up and available right now. Steve, there's going to be a couple extra plays put up as soon as we end this show here. So you'll get three plays in all. But the Major League Baseball is currently up uh, 4% best bet. Um, if we look to the weekend... The only game I checked off, uh, Ski stole it from me. I mean, I had a check mark next to Portland on Sunday. Now, they'll be in a back-to-back situation. But with Portland, I'm just not so sure that it matters. I'd love to see Philadelphia come out tonight um, and win for Tony Finn and win for Tony Finn by like 40 points <laughs> so that we can get some line value on Sunday. Everybody might you know, overreact to a big Philly yeah. win. But I don't think they match up well with Portland whatsoever. I got to tell you that. Just thinking of that Philly and McCollum, and then knowing that Portland now has the bigs to offset Joel Embiid, just not sure. And Gary Trent Jr. has been amazing, guys. You know, amazing. We talked about injuries wow. before, but they've teams have uncovered some things here. I mean, Denver didn't realize that Michael Porter Jr. was going to blow up like this. That's a great asset going into the playoffs. And so is Gary Trent Jr. for Portland. So, and I'll be looking close at that one. I got. Do we have? Can I have one comment? Do we have a minute? I, I was yeah, going to ask you. I want. I, I'm asking you guys something. I did. I wish I'd ask it when you asked me, Steve. And that was uh, the Heat and the Suns. With the Heat already having, and the Suns possibly, I think, two games out of that spot. Uh, Devin Booker playing. At twenty, well, I had a twenty-two years old kid is playing as two hundred games or so under his belt. This kid, this is it fair to say this kid's going to be a star if he stays healthy in this league, or is he already a star? And what's wrong with Miami? Uh, why, why is it that uh, Butler and and none of these guys will take a three? Is it is it fair to say they can't? Butler's shoot a three? out. Butler's been no, out. I'm, I'm saying we'll be out again tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, I, and Drogic, I Drogic may be out tomorrow too, and Miami without Butler and Drogic is not Miami. Uh, and I, I'm glad to hear. I see. I, I was one of some opinions on that. And I, but I was basically saying this Miami team, they 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 can't shoot a three. Well, they have no one to shoot threes anymore. And, and how do they stay? How do they keep pace with Booker and the Suns? So that's what I they were draining wanted. threes. That's how they got up 17 on Milwaukee yesterday with yeah, yeah. threes. And Robinson, hey, hey, how, hey, how, how many points did you give me yesterday? How many points? I believe they were 21 of 46 yesterday. TC, they made 21 threes. Miami did. A little yeah, bit surprising. <laughs> I'll but tell you what, does anybody want an in-game, anybody want an in-show wager for this weekend? We don't have lines yet. Anybody can set a line and head to head to head. Anybody want some takers before we wrap it up? I just yeah. want to fade Tony on something. All right, Tony, give him something to fade you on. Give uh um how about this game coming up? I like the uh, I really like the the under. Ski likes the over. I like the under in this game coming up. We're talking about the Thunder, today's game. Thunder Grizzly, Thunder. you talking about? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, so I like uh, it for a hundred I like it for a hundred reasons. I like the under. Do you like the over at all? So we got 220, 220 Thunder Memphis Grizzlies, 220 is the total right I'll make now. it 219 if it makes it better for you. Yeah, I, I have no opinion on the total whatsoever. I, I just want to bet against you. Well, okay. he's giving you a point of line value, Teddy, so that's enough mm -hmm. right there. He'll give you All over right. 219. So take, Teddy's got over 219. <laughs> take the Mariners tonight, and I'll take Colorado. I like Colorado. You like the Mariners? No, you just want to bet against me. You just want to fade me. 
Speaking of baseball, guys, and we'll leave it at that. First of all, week 69, you know, you guys talk about the weekend games. There's no lines yet. We have to see how these games play out on Friday. It's an excellent reason to get a subscription at wagertalk.com, sportsmemo.com, because you'll get all the plays each and every day when they're ready from these expert handicappers. Um, by the way, I've got baseball and basketball up tonight also. I forgot to mention that. Wagertalk.com, we all have best bets tonight. But get the week package from numerous cappers and make some money. Week 69 is your promo code. And then once again, uh, we'll be back uh, on Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, here on Wager Talk TV for the NBA tip-off. And be sure to check this weekend show, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. MLB first pitch continues seven days a week. Special edition for the weekend with Matt Josephs hosting noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, here on Wager Talk TV. Hey, guys, great show. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your couple days off from me, and I'll be back on Monday with all of you at a 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific Monday for NBA tip-off here on Wager Talk TV. Thanks, everyone. What's the number, Ski? How many saw bucks? <laughs> <laughs>